In this video, I'll be introducing some new functions and how they relate to the prime number theorem. Okay, so the first function I'm going to introduce is the first order Chebyshev function. Previously, I've introduced the function psi, which is called the second order Chebyshev function. The second order function we had was that psi of x was equal to the sum for the primes whose powers are less than x, natural log of p. Well, how about I just get rid of that unnecessary prime power and just have primes? So theta of x is going to be the sum for p less than or equal to x, natural log of p. This is for primes p. That's so much simpler, and that's why it's first order. And as we'll show later, not in this video, but in a later video, that the prime number theorem is in fact equivalent to saying that the limit as x approaches infinity of theta of x over x is equal to 1. Okay? And it's much closer related to the prime counting function because if I do pi of x times natural log of x, right? This is going to be the sum for primes less than or equal to x of 1, except I'm multiplying this by natural log of x, so let's just put it in there. Okay, but this is going to be um, greater than or equal to the sum for primes less than or equal to x of natural log of p, replacing natural log of x with natural log of p, because natural log of p is less than or equal to natural log of x by this condition below the summation, which is simply going to be theta of x. And so it's, they're much closer related. And so that's why I'm using this instead. Okay, so what's the property that I want to show in this video? Well, it's that theta of x grows slower than x. So it's bound, it grows at a slower rate than x. And a formal way of putting this is that there exists a c an element of r and an x0 an element of r such that theta of x is going to be less than or equal to c times x for x bigger than or equal to x0, right? So there's some constant that if I multiply x by and I have some condition that theta of x is going to be less than or equal to it. And this is sometimes written as theta of x is equal to O of x. And this just shows that theta of x and x have a special property in the growth rate. We're going to use this in our proof that theta of x over x, limit as x goes to infinity, is equal to 1. This is just one step closer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at 2 to the 2n. Okay? And the reason why I'm going to look at this is because I can split this up into 1 plus 1 to the 2n. And then by the binomial coefficient theorem, I can say that this is going to be equal to 2n, 2, 0. Okay, times 1 to the 0 times 1 to the 2n, that's just going to be 1. Plus, okay, 2n, choose 1 times the power of 1 times the power of 1, that's still going to be 1. All the way up until 2n, to choose 2n. Then times the power of 1 times the power of 1, it's going to be 1. So now I have this by the binomial coefficient theorem which I know for a fact is going to be greater than 2n choose n. Okay? Because 2n choose n is in here. It's somewhere in there. And while I'm adding a bunch of non-zero terms to it, a bunch of positive terms to it, as well as 2n choose n, so that uh, it's obviously greater than. But then this, I can show, is going to be greater than or equal to the product of the primes such that p is in between n and 2n, so n is less than or equal to p is less than or equal to 2n. So all those primes, the product of those, and here's the reason why. Why? Well, because let's write out what this means. It's 2n times 2n minus 1 all the way down until n plus 1. And then I have to divide that by n factorial, right? But I can go ahead and rearrange some of the terms here so that I have all of my even terms first. So 2n times 2n minus 2 
all the way down, all the even terms, and then I'm going to have 2n minus 1, and then 2n minus 3, so on, all the way down, all the odd terms, okay, over n factorial. But what I'm going to do is for these even terms, I'm going to factor out 2s out of all of them, okay? Okay, I'm going to get rid of all the 2s in these. So then I'm going to have 2 to the power of, well, that's going to be n. 2 to the power of n. And then this is going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, so on, so on, so on, so forth, all the way down until some amount. And so this is going to be n factorial divided by some amount, okay? n factorial divided by some amount. And this term right th there, I'm just going to keep 2n minus 1 all the way down. Okay, I'm going to divide this by n factorial. And oops, look at that. n factorials cancel each other out. I get 2 to the n divided by some amount times 2n minus 1 all the way down the even, the odd terms. Now 2 to the n, as you can prove, is actually going to be greater than or equal to this, so that this right here is going to be bigger than 1. Because 2 to the n is bigger than all that stuff on the bottom, it's bigger than 1. So that this right here is going to be bigger than or equal to just the product of all of these odd terms, right? But the odd terms are going to be bigger than or equal to the product of the primes, right? Because the primes are going to be some selection of these so that I'm multiplying this by more than I should, and so it's going to be bigger than or equal to, like that. And then this right here is going to be equal to e to the sum for those primes between n and 2n of natural log of p, right? Because this nat this sum of natural logs can be turned into a natural log of products, then that product gets taken down by e, then I'm left with this. But then I can rewrite this as e to the sum for p less than or equal to 2n, natural log of p, minus the sum of p less than or equal to n of natural log of p, right? Because this just makes it, gets rid of all the extra terms that are not in this. So this is actually going to be equal to e to the theta of 2n minus theta of n. So now I have that 2 to the 2n is going to be bigger than e theta of 2n minus theta of n. If I take the natural log of both sides, I get natural log of 2 times 2n is going to be bigger than theta of 2n minus theta of n. And so extending this to the real numbers, okay? So extending this to the real numbers, so x an element of the real numbers, what do I get? Well, that's just going to be c times, okay? And I'm going to say here x is going to be 2n. So c times x, 2n, is going to be bigger than theta of x minus theta of x over 2. Okay, but because I'm extending it to the real numbers, I can't just say this is for all x. I have to say that x is bigger than or equal to some amount, x is 0. Okay, but by properties of both of these functions, you can show that this is in fact true for some x 0. I now have to figure out a way how to get just theta of x. And a way to do this is look at x over 2, x over 4, all the way down until x over 2r, where this is the last one bigger than or equal to x0. So um, x over 2r is bigger than or equal to x0 is bigger than x over 2r plus 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up those inequalities. So I'm going to have c times x plus c times x over 2, plus all the way down until c times x over 2 to the r. And this is going to be bigger than theta of x minus 
theta of x over 2. Okay, then plus, what's our next term? Well, it's going to be theta of x over 2 minus theta of x over 4. And then plus so on and so forth until I get all the way down until minus theta of x over 2r plus 1. And now, as you can easily see, all these cancel each other out. And this right here is just going to be a sum of linear functions, so this is just going to be some other constant times x. It's going to be bigger than, okay, I'm going to have theta of x minus theta of x over 2 r plus 1. But guess what? x over 2 r plus 1 is less than x0. So because it's less than x0, this term doesn't matter in the inequality by this, x has to be bigger than or equal to that for this inequality to hold, so that this, using simple manipulation, c prime of x has to be bigger than or equal to theta of x. And that's how I show it. And that's how I show that theta of x is O of x. And that's it.